as you saw in step one, like, you know, within less than five minutes, we created a client, created a matter, and created all the required documents that you need to give to the client, you know, right when the client was there. Let's move on to step two, where we are actually going to show you how to build this client on a very regular basis. Okay, to build a client in ULaw, you will basically enter the, you know, the event, like for example, in this case, initial client meeting, you will describe, you know, what you did, And you will enter the billable time. Now, billable time can be entered in decimal format. You can say 1.2, it'll automatically convert it into an hour and 12 minutes, or you can use our widget. You can click on 12 hours and say one hour and six minutes and hit the save button. Another form of uh, generating a docket in ULaw is using the stop clock feature. So if whenever George makes a phone call, you can go to this matter and just click on the stop clock button. It'll measure time as you're talking to George. If you had to pause, basically because you had to take another phone call, you can hit the pause button and then come back and hit the play to continue. When you're done with it, you can hit the docket button, say it's telephone conversation and hit the save button. Now, not all dockets need to be, uh, you know, a time-based billing. You can also have flat rate billing. You can say new docket, like for example, you can say document drafting you click on action button and you can say that it's a flat rate and then enter the amount sometimes you may want to actually dock it something in new law and not even charge the client so you can, for example you can say you know and you can actually say action and you can say autofill pro bono and it'll mark it as zero dollars and you can hit the save button. Now disbursements in EULA are very simple. You'll go to the disbursement and retain it tab and you'll enter the disbursements the way you actually did the disbursements. For example, if you actually did disbursements out of uh, you know trust, like you paid using a trust check, you will say new disbursements paid from trust and you'll enter the amount let's say $60 for some, uh, and you enter the check number and you can say, what was it? Like for example, say an application fee and hit the payments. Or the most normal way we see, you know, um, uh, law professionals do it is they actually pay it from their business account and recover it using invoice. Now there are several types of disbursements here. You can say paid from general and you can say billables, like for example, court fee or something like that. You can just choose court fee, enter the amount. If it's tax exempted, you can just say it's tax exempted. And the bottom, you tell us how you actually paid for it. You can just say like, you know, I use my RBC credit card to actually pay for it. Okay. Disbursements can even be more complex. Like for example, say photocopies and faxes where you actually, you know, count them by numbers. EULA is smart. As soon as you type for the copies, it'll, the, the screen will change. You can enter the number of disbursements. Like you can say 20 photocopies at 25 cents. And at the bottom, you can actually enter the amount that you actually spent on this photocopies. If you did it at office, you can say no expense. But maybe you actually went to Staples Business Depot and did this using your, your cash and you spent actually $2, you can enter $2, EULA will calculate the HST or the appropriate tax in that jurisdiction. And you can say it was paid by cash and hit the save button. There are also complex disbursements, like for example, mileage that can actually be handled as well. Like for example, you can say new disbursement rate from general and you can say mileage and you can say whether it was an assistant travel mileage, um, was it a lawyer travel mileage or was it a um, you know, a legal counsel travel mileage or a paralegal uh, travel mileage, whatever it is, you can choose one of those options that the, the, the screen will immediately change. You can say how much, you can say 60 kilometers at 40 cents. Maybe there's no expense and you can just hit the save button. Say you've been doing uh, matter events and disbursement for a few days and it's now time for you to actually invoice the client. How would you actually do that in you? Uh, to do that, you will click on the document generation Click on invoice, you'll do complete, 
we always tell our clients do a preview. Obviously, to kind of have a look at the bill and ensure that everything is correct. Make sure that all the details are there. We put a nice watermark called preview. So accidentally, you cannot send it to your client. And once you're happy with it, what you would do, you would go back to the software and hit the document generation button again, invoice, complete. You can even mark this one as paid because like, you know, money is going to come out of trust and you can invoice. When the invoice is actually downloaded, you will see that you know, you know, generates a new invoice number and it also shows you all the billables, the descriptions, sums it up, adds the tax, shows you all the disbursements, summarizes the bill for you in a single statement, how it actually has to look like. Now it also sends you an email reminding you what you should do uh, if there was money that has to be transferred from trust. So let's now have a quick look at the email. The email clearly tells you what the invoice number is and tells you the fee structure, the disbursements, the total, how much has been unpaid so far, gives you a very clear indication of the eligible amount that you are allowed to transfer from trust. Now, this amount is what you will actually go to your bank account and actually transfer to new law. So in new law, you'll click on action, trust invoice payment transfer, It'll exactly show you what you're eligible to transfer, the legal fee and all the disbursements that you did. So you can select all of them. It'll, then you can choose your payment of transfer. In this case, let's assume that say it's an uh, EFT and then you'll give the EFT number. Now, if it's uh, Ontario, you download form 9A when you actually do an electronic fund transfer. So it'll immediately prompt you to download form 9A. In Form 9A, you can fill in all the appropriate account numbers, your bank details, and hit Download button. When you download, what it'll do is it'll take Form 9A and try and fill in as much as it can. For example, it'll put the date, the requisition number, the amount, the reason for the transfer, all the bank details, allowing you to fill in a few more details and just print this document. Let's continue with ULAW, do a couple of more invoices. So this one, I'm just going to put, uh, say, a second uh, client meeting. And let's assume, say, it was another, say, $200 that you want to build a client. And raise, let's raise an invoice for that. Again, same process. You go to document generation, invoice, complete. You can even again mark it as paid because there's some money left in trust. You can do an invoice. The invoice, when you download, will send you an email of exact amount that you're eligible to transfer from trust. You can have a look at it, go to your bank account, do the actual transfer, and you can come back to ULAW and click on Action, Trust Invoice Payment Transfer, and select the amount, and you can actually do a transfer. So in this case, maybe it was a check, you can do a transfer. Now, as you're progressing on ULAW, if you have any questions about the matter, you can always hit the question mark, and that'll tell you where you are with respect to your billing cycle. Like for example, in this case, it tells you that there were two invoices generated. The invoice amount was so much. Everything has been paid in full because we did all the trust transfers that are required. And it clearly tells you the balance that is left in percentage and also indicates you <clears throat> how much, you know, is the balance left in trust as well. So all your trust transfers, your invoice details, are all summarized in the single button called a question mark. Also other analytics that you can always keep running, like for example, if you click here, it tells you 92% of the retainer has been consumed so far, which clearly tells you that you have to pick the phone and call the client to get more retainer. It also shows you other summary, like for example, 15% of this matter is disbursements, while 84% is billable. Let's now actually continue and actually do another invoice where we actually cross the threshold of what you know we are allowed to transfer from trust. So in this case, like for example, be another document validation of document, and you want to charge the client hundred dollars. And when you actually hit the save button, you'll now see that the client actually owes you sixty-two dollars and ninety-seven cents. So when you actually raise an invoice. 
And if you hit the question mark, you'll clearly see that it'll summarize for you what you can transfer from trust and what you're actually waiting for the client to pay. So in this case, the client has to pay you $62.97. If you actually hit the question mark, it tells you that there's a $50.03 that you're eligible to transfer from trust and $62.97 is what you're waiting for the client to pay. So let's actually do a trust transfer. When you click on action, click on trust invoice payment transfer, it'll tell you that the invoice you raised is here, $113. And when you actually click on it, it'll say, even though the invoice is $113, you can only transfer $50.03. So let's again do another EFT and hit the transfer button. It'll be followed up for Don to your clients with a download of a Form 9A, which you can immediately download. And it'll again summarize to you that $50 transaction you know, in a Form 9A. Going back to ULOC, if I, have, if I would hit the question mark now, it should tell me that all the trust transfers are complete. There's no fund left in trust anymore, but the client has to pay you $67.97. Now, when he actually does the payment, you'll go to the disbursement retainer tab. There's a payment here called client payment. You'll only hit this tab when the client pays you money for the work you've already done. If it was a retainer or money that's going into trust, you will hit the new retainer. If it's a payment, you'll hit the payment. Now, when you hit the payment, it automatically asks you how much is the payment. So you can say $62.90. If you paid cash, you can accept cash. If you paid, gave you a check, it allows you to deposit it directly into your general account. So you can say, I'm depositing this check number from my client. Okay, I can even generate him a receipt and do apply. You don't have to go to trust anymore. Now the receipt will be for the whole amount. <clears throat> with a duplicate. Now when you go back to the software and hit the question mark, you'll see that all the details are there. $700 in trust, everything was withdrawn. Uh, you know, when was the last deposit? When was the last withdrawal? <clears throat> The invoice was fully paid, no funds left in trust, the client owes you nothing. Pretty much time for you to go and mark this matter as closed. So what we did uh, in step two, we did several dockets in ULA. Some of them are fix fixed rate, some of them are flat rate, some of them are pro bonos. <clears throat> we invoiced them several times, like you know, uh, ULA accepts a lot of uh, interim billing. We did a lot of uh, disbursements in ULA and then we, uh, you know, uh, invoiced them as well. We accepted client payment. Uh, we did trust invoice payment transfer. And we used this question mark to constantly guide us in that process of where we were with respect to this matter. And finally, if uh, at any given point of time, uh, you know, if you had to go back to our invoices, you can just uh, click on document generation, invoices, reprint, and you can choose any of the invoice that you did and you can actually reprint.